All right, so this video we're checking out the Diatone Q33. So this is a tiny 176 scale RC car, and they have um, several colors and two versions. They have a uh, non-FPV version here on the left, and then you have the camera here on the right, which is the FPV version. These are both um, the ready to run, which includes the controller. I believe they also sell the car by itself, I think for like 50 bucks, um, if you just want the car. And you can use um, a uh, off-market controller or, or a different controller if you want. It uses the FlySky AFHDS protocol. And there are third-party controllers that you can buy that will work with this, as well as any uh, radio that produces that protocol, including multi-protocol radios. Now, the difference between the two versions are on the box here. And basically... Um, the one on the left here is the non-FPV version. You have a longer runtime, 60 minutes, a smaller battery, 110 milliamp hours, and it weighs 19 grams. The FPV version only runs up to 20 minutes, 140 milliamp hour larger battery, and weighs 24 grams, so quite a bit heavier. So inside the box you get a USB charger with a JST plug that plugs into the bottom of the car. You get a keychain, a spare canopy or, or shell, and of course you get the controller for both, they're um, the same for both versions. Okay, so here's what the two cars look like. The shells look the same for both, obviously with the difference of the FPV camera. Uh, it looks like it's possible you could add your own FPV camera later. Uh, maybe there's like a little piece here you can pop off. I'm not exactly sure about that and I don't think they sell the camera separately. Um, plus you're probably going to want a larger battery. I found that the runtime on the uh, FPV version is probably closer to 15 minutes instead of 20 minutes and it really depends on how hard you're running it. And uh, the camera will die first so I think it probably dies at a higher voltage than the car. Uh, the car will run about another minute or so even after the camera stops, um, stops transmitting. The camera only comes with um, four channels on your so every time you press the button it only changes the channel. There's only four of them on there. It shows them in the manual. The uh, power level is only 25 milliwatts. And interestingly the um, FPV version comes with a paper manual but the non-FPV version does not. So you have to go to the QR codes on the box and download the manual. It's just a PDF file. I'm not really sure why that is but yeah that's, uh, uh, that's why the FPV version uh, comes with the manual, but the non-FPV version does not. Alright, so taking a closer look at the car itself here, you can see that the front wheel is slightly smaller than the rear wheel. It's, uh, I think it's about 11 millimeters versus about 12 millimeters. They're rubber, you know, fairly grippy. Not There's no, um, like, it's not air filled or anything like that, it's just rubber. There's not much of any suspension, really, to talk about, uh, and front or rear. Obviously, the front wheels will rotate. You have your charging port here, the JST port here, just plug it in and the lights will start um, slowly flashing while it's charging and then when it's done charging it will the lights will turn off. It takes about 15 minutes to charge the larger battery here and um, yeah so it's about 15 minutes to charge it and about 15 minutes of run time. You short press this button here which is the on off button that'll turn the car on. So just short press it. And you got a blinking light. Then you turn on the controller. You so slide the controller like this. It'll bind like that. It'll start flashing. Solid light here means that it's in beginner mode, and which means it's a slightly reduced speed. I think 60% speed. Um, and actually, if you're trying to run this FPV, I recommend beginner mode. I'll explain a little bit later why that is. If you want to uh, run this in expert mode, so basically just turn off, hold down this little multi-function button while you turn the controller on. It'll bind up. And then you get a, uh, a blinking red light here, which means it's in the um, expert mode. So it's gonna be full speed and it is very fast um, and somewhat difficult to control in full speed. Okay, so just, you know, quickly looking at the rest of the car, really nothing, you know, nothing fancy here. It looks really basic. There's no fancy lights or anything like that. You can control, like on the turbo racers. Um, the, the steering is, of course, proportional. 
So I'll go ahead and demonstrate the steering here. It is proportional and the thing is um, you know, while it is proportional uh, the precision of the controller um, doesn't seem to be as nice as the turbo racers and uh, I'll explain a little bit about that in a second. Okay, so if you're here just for the giveaway and you've already left your comments down below, uh, just be aware that I'm not going to be pulling the winner out of the comments section. Uh, you will have to um, go to the pinned comment that I will leave. So if you guys don't know what a pinned comment is, it's going to be the first comment from me. Not It'll, it'll say pinned comment. It won't be from someone else. So look for that. And then you can reply to that pinned comment with... Um, the code that you're going to need from the giveaway form. So go to the pinned comment. There'll be instructions there to go to the form. I'm going to need to get your email address. If you don't want to give me your email address, you won't be able to enter the contest. Uh, the one, the thing that's going to be given away is this car here. It's the non-FP version. It's going to be shipped directly from Diatone. And uh, yeah, just um, go to the giveaway form, fill it out, put your email in, um, and then uh, leave your comment as a reply to the pin comment that I left. I'm doing that because I don't want the regular comment section to be filled with giveaway clutter. And I'm sure a lot of you are probably have already left a comment there. You should probably delete that and leave it as a reply to the pin comment instead. So hopefully you guys have watched this and know what the rules are so you have a chance to win. Otherwise, if you just left a regular comment, uh, that is not going to get you an entry into this contest. Okay, that's going to do it for this explanation. Alright, so taking a look at the controller here, it's pretty basic. Uh, there's no steering trim or throttle trim here. You can do the trim uh, via this button here. So. It is, um, well, you could read the manual. I had a really hard time getting this to work properly. So what you're supposed to do is hold, while the, obviously while you're bound up and you have the, you have the uh, car on and then the controller on, you're supposed to hold down the button and then if, the, if you want to trim it uh, so that it trims to the right, you turn the steering wheel all the way over to the right while you're holding the button and then that will trim it and then you let go and that will save it but I had trouble getting that to work correctly it, for one thing getting this car to go straight is not easy in general the even the um, you know compared to the turbo racers on the other brand those aren't as easy to get to go straight either you have to do a lot of trimming as well but this trimming this is not uh, easy and uh, I couldn't get consistent results to get this to go straight because you know the goal is to not have to put put your hand on the steering wheel and just go you know pull the trigger and go straight but it would often just go darting off to the right or left I could never really get it to go straight now of course you can still drive it around and make little adjustments but be, you know because the proportional steering is there you can do that it's just that um, it makes it very challenging, uh, especially when you're when you're driving this around FPV, uh, because it is a very wide field of view. So objects kind of jump on you suddenly, and so you may not realize you're crashing into something before it's too late. And it's, by that time, it's a little too hard to make that adjustment. So um, you're going to try. You're going to want to drive this around more slowly so that you have a little bit more precision in your steering now the other thing is with the fpv version because the camera is kind of on the back wheel here it's a little bit um back heavy and so the the front wheels don't have as much grip in terms of the steering and i felt i felt that when i was driving the fpv version around versus the non-fpv version around, i thought the steering was more um blocked in on the non-fpv version because the cg wasn't back heavy so another thing to keep in mind. That's why I think you know you just want to fly it and drive this, <laughs> drive this around kind of slowly, and um, you'll get better results. I think uh, in terms of like just having control over it and managing a, an obstacle course or track, um, and also even in this, even in the beginner mode when you're driving kind of slow, which you you, do, you have proportional throttle, you can just pull a little bit and go slower. Um, 
you still want a lar fairly large area. I tried doing this on a tabletop, actually on this on this desk here, uh, FPV, and it's quite challenging. I think that it can be done, but it is you, it's it's very hard to control the speed um, on a very small table that's only about six feet. So you're gonna need a little bit larger floor area. So obviously, like a hardwood floor, something you know. Um, I would say at least 10 by 10 feet of area is probably going to be ideal and obviously you can you know, obviously make your own custom tracks and all that kind of stuff. Now this will go on carpet. It has a little bit of clearance there you can see in terms of the wheel. Uh, it has enough power to go over carpet. It's very bumpy of course. But um, for example transitioning from like hardwood floor to a rug, you know that's a fairly mm, big bump up compared to to the size of this car and obviously the car will just flip over and a lot of times it will just flip over or um, not be able to um, go over uh, from the hardwood floor to the carpet that happened quite often uh, if there was a uh, like a ramp or something it would be fine that you can transition from one surface to another but yeah it can do it. it's just that transitioning from one to another is uh, not easy for something this tiny so you know, back onto this controller because you have limited options in terms of what you can adjust. Um, I think it's, in a, it's like a cheaper controller here. You know, compared to the one that came with the Turbo Racer. So this is the the controller that came with the monster mini, the baby monster truck here. So all the Turbo Racers come with a more traditional uh, RC controller for these RC cars. So you have basically throttle trim, dual rates. You know, you know extra channels. You know. Uh, you have this nice foam grip on the steering wheel, which you don't have on the uh, cheaper controller here. Um, it just, and overall the controller just feels more sturdy, just feels nicer in the hand. And of course you have more options for adjustments, which makes um, controlling the car in a more precise way better, in my opinion. Uh, I know some of you guys might disagree with that, but in general, this cheaper controller um, because it lacks a lot of those options to give you that precision, it I felt like I was really struggling to control it at higher speeds. I just didn't feel like the precision was there. And if you want to use this with a, one of the, uh, the FlySky RC car controllers, I'll link a couple of them down below. I'm not 100% sure if uh, they'll work or not because I don't have them, but they, I did notice that they listed the AFHDS protocol. So in theory, they should bind up with this and to bind it up you you know uh, it's pretty easy you just instead of short pressing the on off button you long press it for two seconds and then I'll put it into bind mode and then you go to your controller and then uh, go and put that into bind mode and you should be able to use the other controller there's also instructions in the manual that explain how to do binding I think that's uh, the in my opinion the, the the downside of this system is the controller is just not as nice Yes, you can get used to it and still drive this around, have a good time. It's just not as nice as the ones that are on the turbo racers, which do cost more. I think in terms of the cost difference, it's probably not a lot. It's like ten, fifteen dollars, and obviously the turbo racers don't come with the FPV camera, which you can probably add yourself in you know in a similar way. It's um, uh, again, that's probably like a whole different tutorial video on how to do that. I. Um, I've heard from them that they're not going to be coming out with an FPV version of the car. I know a lot of you guys have asked me, oh, you're going to convert to FPV. Um, just haven't had time to do anything like that. And it, you know, uh, the, the differences you know, the, in terms of the cars, they don't look like cars. Like, this is, doesn't look like a car, like, compared to, you know, here's the C71. These look like cars. These are designed, I think, more for the FPV community. You know, this shell here doesn't look like any kind of real car. And they just designed this so that it could hold a camera. Um, it does look, you know, it does look nice, uh, you know, but it doesn't look, it looks kind of futuristic actually, but it looks kind of boxy and not like a, an actual car. It doesn't look scale at all, of course. So in terms of the speed, um, it's about the same. You know, I think they've probably got a similar motor in there. It's just that, you know, again, when you run at full speed, it getting this one to go straight or having good control over it is difficult, especially in a smaller area. So I think this is going to be more fun if you're just going to be using it for FPV and driving around slow and doing like an optical course, something like that. I think that would be pretty good for this one here. And, you know, obviously you've seen some videos already where people are having fun with their pets and stuff like that. 
Uh, you can definitely do that with this one here. And it, you know, it goes over the carpet as long as it's not too deep. Um, so it's, it should be pretty good fun with uh, the kids or your pets. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.